afternoon. Uh, those of you in the, in the news media, uh, you know, we sent out these things that we're going to have a press conference. Automatically, my phone starts ringing from the news media people. What's this about? What's this about? Well, it's not about me and Chief White playing a game of marbles, okay? It, it's We're not going to tell you because I know you want to tweet it, you want to Facebook it, and you want to put it on your website. We're going to all do it at the same time. I'm not in the media giving advantage of one over the other. So in the future, if we say we're having a press conference, to say we're having a press conference, it's going to be at 3 o'clock, and you need to show up if you want to. If you don't, that's fine, too. But I'm not going to give one agency a tip over the other one as to what we're going to be talking about. Good afternoon. I'm Sheriff Taylor. Union County, uh, thank you for being here today. We have quite a group of people here uh, with us. Uh, two from Spartanburg Public Safety, uh, Investigator Burgess, Captain Nowak, uh, Probation and Parole, Andy Fowler, Beth Ballou, and uh, Drew Picaro from Greenville County. Let's see who's behind me. Oh, I let him behind me. This is uh, Jerome Beatty, investigator with public safety, Chief Sam White, and Captain McNeil. Uh, today, I'm not here to tell you we've arrested a modern day Bonnie and Clyde, but we have removed two people who should not have been on the streets to start with. This just adds more support that our judicial system is failing the citizens of this state. What's it going to take to stop it? I don't want you to name, and I don't want the, the powers to be in Columbia and the General Assembly to name some law change after some citizen being killed in my county because of two thugs being put back on the street that have violated the law, and they can't adapt, uh, adapt to society. On April 22nd at approximately 10 p.m., law enforcement officials from Spartanburg Public Safety and Union Sheriff's Office and Union Public Safety arrested in connection with a string of armed robberies in at least five upstate counties last night in a motel in Spartanburg. They were taken into custody without incident. Uh, Matthew Williams, Jr., 26 years of age, of 101 Pine Street, Apartment D, and Portia Gage, 23, of 40, 44 Cross Keys uh, Highway in Union. <coughs> Give you a little back background. Uh, these two subjects were arrested in July of 2011 for similar crimes where they were each charged with two counts of strong-armed robbery, one count of attempted robbery, one count of criminal conspiracy. These crimes were committed in Union County, Spartanburg County, and Greenville County. Look who we got here. Um, those crimes uh, occurred. They went to court. They received a sentence of eight years suspended to a four-year sentence and four years probation. Okay, that was in January, correction, July 2011. 2011, we in 2014. They're already back out on the street. Gage was released from prison on January 31st of this year. Williams was released March the 10th of this year. Both of them are still actively on probation. One of these individuals reported to his probation agent yesterday morning before they went out and committed two more armed robbers. This is, again, a perfect example of a judicial system that's broke. Law enforcement does their job. The solicitor's office do their job. They get these people to court, they go before a judge, get smacked on the hand, put right back on the street in less than three years after they had already been convicted of robbery. Um, when these individuals were arrested last night, uh, 
and, and, and Spartanburg. They were also in possession of drugs. Uh, Captain Nowak, I don't know if you want to make any comment about it, but their, their charges uh, were, I think, possession of marijuana and, and some other type of drug that they had in the rooms last night. Um, any any questions or any comment from anyone on the podium? First of all, I want to thank Captain McNeil and Jerome Beatty, investigator with public safety. They got on this case early. We had uh, uh, two robberies that took place um, on Monday night, Monday afternoon, one in the city attempted robbery and, and one in, in the county. Uh, Captain McNeil came out that night, started working the case, and then on uh, yesterday morning, we got additional information. These two officers were able to identify both individuals. We had names. Uh, we saw where there had been additional crimes uh, that had happened, and we started contacting some of the surrounding agencies. We know that there will be additional arrest from Greenville County Sheriff's Department. Uh, Drew may con uh, make, make a comment on that. Greenwood Police Department also uh, will have arrest. They had an uh, armed robbery that took place yesterday. Um, Lawrence City Police Department will be making arrest uh, charges on these individuals. Irmo Police Department in Columbia. Uh, so this has been quite a, a spree of these individuals that started um, sometime around the end of March, uh, 1st of April. They, one thing that made this difficult is that uh, they were using two different vehicles in Greenville County. They were using a, a Chevrolet uh, Impala, uh, gray in color, and then a short time after that, they purchased another vehicle, which was, a, I think, a 2001 uh, Honda Accord, silver in color with blacked out windows. So that that was a, kind of a factor. We, we had the same MOs on the people, but we had different vehicles. So that took us a little while to sort through that. We couldn't figure out where the, where the other car was coming in to play until last night. Anybody got a comment that you'd like to say? Jesus. Sheriff, you know of how many cases so far that you know of, are they involved in from across all counties and municipalities? Probably in the neighborhood of 10 uh, law enforcement agencies. Maybe even more once that the word gets out. Uh, I mean, we still have people calling us today. Uh, and and there's some other counties in the upstate region that we've got to make contact with. So 10 agencies are you thinking 10 robbery incidents or more than that? Some, some areas like Spartanburg had two, um, Greenville I think had more, and, and then the city had one, we had one, so it, it varies. Irmo had one, I know of. They were going in to check checking the cash type places, and I think Captain Yaws was two checking the cash. Uh, I think one was a checking the cash, one was check and go, but the check cash and clean businesses is what they were talking about. They don't think they got money. Yes. Um, the other, the first one that, that we had in our county, they actually tried to rob a Dollar General store. And in the city, it was a check and Did you call that? I would call them a more of a pain to law enforcement. Uh, I don't want to give them more credit than they they deserve. But, uh, they they uh, have a life of crime. As I said earlier, uh, they can't they can't adapt to society. So when that's the place, there's a place that they need to be in. It's called a controlled environment. It's called prison. And just to be clear, between these robberies, they were still checking in with their parole officer? Yes. I don't know. That. Just 
speculation. They're probably paying their parole fees with stolen money. I mean, none of them work. Sheriff, I'm thinking about some of these robberies. How thankful are you? It didn't escalate to, like you said, somebody losing their life who says that an innocent bystander at one of these stores or check places. Captain and I were talking outside a while ago. We are very lucky that uh, nobody has been hurt in these incidents. Uh, we even made that comment last night. If we didn't hurry up and get these people off the streets, somebody was going to be killed. Uh, they, uh, they were carrying plastic guns in some of these robberies. Um, in our robbery that we had other night at Dollar General, they, they never show, showed a gun. They said they had one. They did show a hammer. Uh, so you go making threats, I got a gun, somebody may call you bluff on it. Yes, sir. Was he in any way related to the Same day. They were the same people. Yes. It was. That, went, that attempted to go in, there was another person that was in the car that drove them away from the scene. We had the same thing. Only, yeah, only the other one on Saturday. Only one person approached the store and they jerked on the door. When the door didn't come open, they quickly come back in the car. Yes, sir. Uh, we were very fortunate. We have a good working relationship with these folks. and. Uh, we, we're not going to take all the credit for it because we can't. Uh, we have a good relationship with those folks, and we called them last night, and they made us where we needed to go, and we took care of business. That's that's what law enforcement does. Law I think that may even have stemmed from the, the incidents that took place back in 2011, and that's why they're doing that. Uh, I have talked with uh, investigators in Greenwood. I've talked to them again this morning, um, and according to what they tell me, they uh, came up and talked with them this morning, and they have admitted that they did the the check and cash uh, in Greenwood yesterday afternoon. They attempted to rob a place in Lawrence yesterday afternoon. Uh, they told our investigators last night about that incident. What led to the arrest last night? I never was it a tip that We had gotten information. Uh, about the vehicle. Uh, we knew where the vehicle... Uh, I got a call yesterday afternoon and asked about a paper tag. So a paper tag on the vehicle. And they told me uh, the numbers, and I said no, but we have one similar to that. We made a phone call to our local uh, auto dealership, and he confirmed that he had uh, sold them that vehicle. So that that's what started our search of, uh, of the area. I really don't want to. That, that, that may hurt their business, and I'm not in the business hurting the business. So why are they now? They just had certain Well, they, they had said they served their justice. I'm not sure the sentence of that either one of them got you can consider justice. Sheriff, what would you like to see done? What uh, would you like to see? I'd like to see people go to jail and stay. When they, they commit a robbery and they threaten somebody's life, they need to go to prison and they need to stay there. They can't adapt to society. They get out in less than two years, and they write back going back robbing the same places that they robbed two years ago. A lot of times hear about the prison of the 
that's not my problem. My job is to put them in prison. It's the people that run the prison system's job to figure out how they're going to handle it. Not putting them back on the streets is not the problem. Not going to solve the problem. conference here two years from now talking about the same two jokers. Uh, you would, you'd like to see justice done with these two uh, and, and put somewhere for a long period of time. They, they've already proven to us that they're, they're not going to adapt. When you get a rap sheet that's uh, five pages long on one and five pages long on the other, it soon becomes to look like a Sears and Roebuck catalog. Uh, so they, you know, they not, they're not going to learn. They're going to keep on to somebody gets hurt or they have to hurt somebody. No, sir, they are in, in Spartanburg County Detention Center at this time, and they've got uh, several holes put on them. So when they get through there, everybody else will get the turn. They, they were arrested last night in Sparkburg, and they are wanted for all these crimes in these other um, jurisdictions. There may be even more coming forth, more charges. So it's a male and a female. I cannot answer that. They were in the same room together. That's all I can tell you. questions. Again, I want to thank uh, these officers. They uh, they were out at 3 o'clock this morning in, in, in uh, Spartanburg City as well. They uh, they worked late. Investigator Lewis Nelson with Spartanburg worked hard on this case. Uh, and uh, we don't hesitate to call him, and he don't hesitate to call us. But that's, that's the kind of partnerships law enforcement should be about. We don't work together. We don't get things like this done. They've terrorized the upstate in five different counties uh, and, and in these municipalities inside these counties. That's how you get cases solved. And, and I, I appreciate each one of them and, and the job that they do. There's no agency that's standing here that I can't pick up the phone and call them and, and they're going to help us. I want them to know if that doesn't happen when they call Union County to let me know. But, um, our investigators over here, they, they work hard. We don't have a lot of people. We have 30 people counting me, 31 counting me. So it's not a lot of us to go around. But, uh, again, these people that committed these crimes were from Union. Everybody doesn't come from Spartanburg and Green. We have our own, too. Sheriff. Um, you said earlier, I mean, these are just two individuals that have gone, that have now been arrested. But when you look towards the future of the situation of law enforcement across the entire upstate, you know, there's there's armed robberies, there's robberies, there's murders. And you know, what's it going to take for these laws to be increased, the punishments to be increased to protect the citizens of the upstate? Uh, why has not happened yet? It's going to have to come from the General Assembly, and it's going to have to be mandated. I mean, you you look at, at the uh, DUI laws now. Uh, they said, you know, you're going to get a maximum of so many years for DUI. That don't mean nothing. Look who's making the laws. Look who's representing people in court. Uh, I'm not a rocket scientist, but it don't take me 
long to look through the waters and see what's happening here. You can put all these mandated sentences, but if they're not really mandated, it's not what the paper is written on. Now, we, we have a habitual offender that charged on somebody to go to court for a habitual offender and is supposed to get a mandatory sentence and he don't get it. I, I can see through that. So then what... What can the citizens of the upstate do? Because ultimately, you know, we vote. Is complain. Like complain to their representatives. The, how, the General Assembly appoints these judges, and the judges set the sentences. Complain to the General Assembly. You can complain to me, but that's like that's like water off a duck's back. I can't do a thing. But we've got to change the way our judicial system is set up. Or we are set up for failure if it continues the way it is right now. Total, no, sir, not at this point. We know that they got uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of three or four hundred dollars from from uh, our Dollar General. Uh, they didn't get anything from from uh, the city. Uh, the investigator told me yesterday from Greenwood. They got them for about six thousand uh, dollars. Spartanburg, I'm not sure they may continue, but uh, they were. They knew the clientele that they were going after. Well, they had done it before. They, uh, I guess they figured it was pretty easy prey. Which county got hit the hardest? Spartanburg, Union, Greenville, Greenwood? I would say Spartanburg City got hit the hardest. They, uh, they had, had hit twice. Um, I don't think that the, one of them that did not get inside. Um, I think all of us was about one time apiece, and there was a couple of trials that they, did, they weren't successful. Um, I'm not sure how much they got out of Irmo. Uh, Irmo Police Department is also looking at these individuals. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.